an increasing number of videos with strange sounds of unknown origin has been circulating on the internet in the last few months. We have made a selection of those videos in trying to understand what is really behind this phenomenon. First of all, we have noticed that a good number of these videos carry one specific kind of sound in the background. It's a very low note, repeating in cycles every few seconds. It somehow reminds of the long trumpets used by Tibetan monks. But it also reminds of the soundtrack from the movie War of Worlds, where a similar, haunting sound announced the arrival of the mechanical monster called the tripod. This kind of haunting sound can be easily produced by an instrument called the waterphone. Whichever source was originally used, it's a fact that a good number of videos use the same identical soundtrack with only some small variations from one another. Some people add their own voice, purporting to be worried. Some use an eco filter to increase the dramatic effect. Some add their own dogs barking in the background. Hearing all my dogs barking. What's that noise? Some place the sound far in the distance to make the scene more credible. Some use an old chemtrails video, possibly to suggest a connection between the two phenomena. Some filter off the lower frequencies. And some pick up their work and add sea waves to it. And there's also someone who doesn't miss the opportunity to stick a nice UFO in the picture. Unfortunately, most of these people forget to clean up the audio track from voices and noises in the background, which gives away the fact that they are copied from one another. Grabbing the soundtrack from a video to use it in your own, it's the easiest thing in the world. Here is another example with different sounds. Let's be careful, however, not to rush to conclusions. The fact that many videos are fake does not mean that the phenomenon doesn't exist. In fact, sometimes this can be the most effective trick to hide something that is sitting in plain view. Remember the infamous alien autopsy film? You circulate this mysterious footage, you wait for someone to realize it's a fake, and then you come out and say, see, it's all just a big hoax. 
It's obvious that aliens do not exist. The strange sound phenomenon does exist instead, and it dates back at least to 1976. It was then that radio amateurs from all over the world began picking up a mysterious tapping sound of unknown origin, which they dubbed the woodpecker sound. It was later discovered that the sound originated from Russia, where the Soviets were conducting their first experiments in transmitting powerful beams of radio frequencies into the upper layers of the atmosphere. The U.S. quickly went to work and eventually set up a similar system called HARP, which is based in Alaska. This is not the place to discuss HARP in detail, but we do know that since the early 90s, also the United States were able to send powerful beams of radio frequencies into the ionosphere. This can generate ELF, extreme low-frequency radio waves, being reflected down to Earth. HARP's combined antennae generate a focused billion-watt high-frequency radio beam. During this modification, this pulsing beam stimulates the ionosphere, creating ELF waves which can move great distances through the lower atmosphere and penetrate into the Earth to find missile silos, underground tunnels, and communicate with hidden submarines. ELF waves can also be used to scan the Earth's layers under the surface. There is a way of being able to use this type of technology to, to be able to look for minerals that can be just below the surface of the Earth. Uh, oil, gas, uh, different types of ore. Beaming ELF waves underground can trigger a resonance effect which results in the emission of actual sound waves. In 1983, I did radio tomography with 30 watts looking for oil in the ground. Picture these strings on the piano as layers of the earth. Each one has its own frequency. What we used to do is beam radio waves into the ground <clears throat> and it would vibrate any strings that were present in the ground. We might get a sound back like and we'd say, that's natural gas. We might get a sound back like, and we say that's crude oil. We were able to identify each frequency. We accomplished this with just 30 watts of radio power. If you do this with a billion watts, the vibrations are so violent that the entire piano would shake. In fact, the whole house would shake. In fact, the vibrations could be so severe underground that could even cause an earthquake. And finally, ELF waves can also be used for much less reassuring purposes for the population at large. But this same kind of signal, signals in the same frequency range, can affect uh, human mood. Extremely low frequencies affect us because they are the same frequencies that our brains output. And when they're in the environment around us, our brains try to entrain to them. Using electromagnetic warfare against human beings, you can cause disease, you can cause hysteria, or you can cause passivity for population control. Dr. Persinger's tests suggest that carefully programmed electromagnetic frequencies can tap into individual brains and influence people's emotions. The cognitive processes of the human brain are really quite simple. And if you understand how they work, you can make entire populations think and decide uh, the manner in which you wish. With all this in mind, we should look at the many episodes in the past decades where mysterious humming sounds were reported by citizens from all over the world. The first case to make the front pages took place in Bristol, England, in the late 70s. The sound some people were hearing came to be known as the Bristol hum. I am objecting to a noise that is driving me um, to distraction because I'm not getting sleep and I can't settle to read, and it's a sort of a droning hum that's in the background. Not everyone could hear it, as the sound was at the bottom of the range of frequencies audible by the human ear. But those who did hear it were definitely not happy about it. And they put a machine in a room and they said it didn't really uh, record anything that they would say constituted a nuisance. <laughs> but I think it constitutes a nuisance, you know. Many people spent sleepless nights Others fell in a state of depression. Others simply had to pack and move to another town. And there was even one case of suicide. This is an original recording of the Bristol Hum. Q 
Curiously, rather than look for the source of the sound, the British authorities preferred to look into the ears of their citizens to see whether they had some kind of medical condition. In the 1990s, a similar phenomenon called the Taos Hum was reported in the small town of Taos, New Mexico. Shortly after we moved here, within the first few months, I just woke up in the middle of the night and uh, heard this strong humming sound, kind of like a mm. The media seemed extremely happy to give coverage to the most outlandish theories put forth by the locals. I think the only possibility that I can think of for the Taos hum would be that the Earth's crust here is uh, very thin and the magma moving around under the crust is in constant motion all around the Earth. Perhaps that, can, that makes a noise that has a frequency that some people can hear. But no government authority ever showed up to do a serious research on that strange phenomenon. A few years later, a similar sound called the Kokomo hum began disrupting the lives of the people in this small Indiana town. The exasperated citizens went as far as hiring a sound expert, who eventually confirmed a very low humming sound in different parts of town. But he could not pinpoint the source of the sound while also in this case, no government authority ever showed up to try and solve the mystery. Same story in 2006 for Auckland, New Zealand. The low humming sound many were hearing was nicknamed the Auckland Buzz. Also in this case, sound experts were hired to record the sound, which turned out to be very similar to the Bristol hum. But also in this case, the Auckland citizens were never able to discover the source of the annoying sound. In 2011, a similar case in the county of Durham, Great Britain, attracted the attention of the national media. It's like a... It's a throbbing, vibrating noise, which builds up to a peak, and then settles down again, then builds up again, and can't be pinpointed anywhere. Also in 2011, the small town of Windsor, Ontario, went through a similar experience with what was called the Windsor Rumble. The locals described this rather unsettling, rhythmic vibration of unknown origin. We began hearing and feeling a very loud vibration outside. Uh, we really didn't acknowledge it at the time, but a year and a half later, the vibrations and the rumblings have become so intense that it's disrupted our daily lives. The rumblings going on again at 7.30 in the morning. was a real um, strong uh, vibration that had come from the ground. There needs to be an investigation. It's out there. Uh, it's getting uh, complaints are rising and uh, it started with one or two people and now it's gotten to hundreds and hundreds of people across the southern west part of the city and uh, uh, even bordering into the south. Needless to say that also in this case no one was ever able to identify the source of the sound. In light of these facts there's a limited number of videos on the internet with similar sounds to those reported in these historic cases that seems to be definitely worthy of attention. Oh, I hope we can hear this. This is the noise. What is that? Four forty seven AM on a Saturday morning. This noise has been going on since like Three o'clock, off and on. I don't know what the hell that is. Okay, I don't know if we're going to be able to hear this on the video, and I know this is a strange video, but I was upstairs in our house, and I heard this loud grumbling, rumbling sound. So I took the, took him out, you know, and we came outside, and, and there's this loud, low-pitched, grumbling sound, so I'm recording it to see if we can hear it on the... It's, um... 5.07 and the noise has died down a lot, but it's still pretty steady. I'm up on the 
second floor of the house. It's about 7.30 in the morning. Um, I've been hearing these sounds for over three weeks now. This morning they're really loud.